Hey guys, today we're talking about grip. One of the most important fundamentals that's often neglected is grip. Let me tell you why. You should understand grip feels right because we're holding the gun. When you're holding something, physically holding something, you often get a false sense of security because you don't have any checks and balances consciously if you're holding it right. What I mean is you take the first shot because you've set your grip or established your grip after that's done, then it all goes out of the window. The reason it does is because in fundamentals, typically of marksmanship, what you see is literal and physical things that you do. For example, front sight focus. Like on this Tri-11 made by Triarch Systems, I got a very broad fiber optic red front sight. So if I was doing front sight focus and the focus of my attention, I'm going to transition my focal view or my focus from the target to the front sight. When I do that, I'm literally doing something. It could be argued for most fundamentals, there's something to do. When you look at grip, typically we have vague and indefinite terms for understanding grip. One of them is 60-40. Like apply 60% grip in one hand and 40% grip in the other. I'm not an expert at anything that has to do with scientific understandings of what that feels like or looks like. My Fitbit doesn't measure grip, so it ha I would have a hard time for understanding how to apply that. I mean, do you shake somebody's hand and you go, that's too tight, let off a little bit? Yep, that's 61%, you're good. So you have to have something that's really definitive in how you apply it. So even when you set your grip with a push-pull, for example, and then you break that first shot, are you consciously thinking about your grip through the duration of each shot string? Remember, one of the characteristics of the fundamentals of marksmanship is the luxury of time. You have all the time in the world to shoot slow aim fire. But in a gunfight, you don't. Time is of the essence. In fact, it's one of the main principles of speed and accuracy in order to win a gunfight. So if I'm shooting one round, I'm shooting two rounds. A .15 split in between rounds. But how do I think about my grip and how it's applied? That's what we have to answer today. One, I have to give you a tangible approach and how to apply your grip, meaning by the numbers. If you could diagnose what you're doing wrong, often it's a good process or technique because how am I going to measure performance? One aspect of this is if I'm measuring performance and I could go back and identify specific steps in the process I did wrong, I could go back and isolate those steps and then refine them and then reapply them in execution. Again, a mechanical and diagnostic approach in order to become better. We can't just operate in vague and indefinite terms. So here's what I'm gonna do for you guys today. With this weapon system, I'm gonna give you three steps on one hand and three steps on the other hand. And then I'm gonna teach you how to push and pull the pistol on and off target in order for you to be successful in your grip. Grip is all about the structure that you build around the gun. It's not muscles, it's not effort. It's all about structure. So here we go. All right, so the first thing that we have to do is understand that this is a semi-automatic pistol and designed basically the same. It hasn't changed much throughout history. Pistols, generally speaking, have been the same design in frame and slide. In this case, this Tri-11, which is a double stack nine mil, meaning the nine mils are stacked side by side in the magazine. It's not a single stack magazine, which means the frame or grip of the pistol is gonna be thicker or wider. The slide reciprocates over the frame. Two main parts or components that are major components. Don't sharpshoot me if you're a person who tracks nomenclature. I wanna talk in layman's term for you to understand how this works and best optimizing your grip. You have two main things that happen in the cycle of operation when the gun goes boom. You have a slide that reciprocates back. You have a barrel that literally goes up. This is called muzzle flip. We'll call it muzzle flip. And you also have something that's known as recoil where you have rearward movement of the gun. So again, muzzle flip, gun goes up. Recoil, gun goes back. I want to separate the two of those major things that happen because one 
is better than the other. And here's what I mean. A pistol that muzzle flips because of the cycle of operation, when it muzzle flips, it does so because gas is offletting out of the barrel from the combustion that took place in the chamber. I won't get into the weeds of this, but just understand that this action where the front sight flips up in your field of view and falls down onto the target allows you to pick up your second shot and subsequent shots after that on target. Because if you broke a shot and the front sight went up and then you broke another shot while the gun was still cycling up in action in muzzle flip, then what you would do is you would essentially stitch the target from your initial point where the gun or barrel was settled in the action of the gun moving up through the target. Now, if this is a deliberate thing, that's one thing, but what I want to happen is I want the gun to muzzle flip and fall back on target to break another shot in the same place. This is often referred to as a control pair in the, in the shot sequence of two rounds back to back. But if the gun is reciprocating through an entire magazine, it's just going boom, boom, boom. That's a good thing. One, you're not gonna stop often the muzzle flip unless you've dissipated the gas via a compensator. But often we have the recoil that takes place after the muzzle flip because the energy is traveling up and back. Now we want to control recoil because when the gun's going back, it's taking my rear sights off the target as well, which means I have to reacquire or just continue to shoot and then continue to degrade my accuracy on target. Because if I have control of the rear of the gun and the muzzle flips and it comes back down on the same place, I'll have sustained accuracy on target while I shoot fast. And I'm gonna demo that for you right now. All right guys, so I'm gonna do a demo in demonstrating wrong grip versus right grip. The reason I vaguely call it wrong is because there's inherently a metric ton of wrong tactics to apply for grip. The right grip is the way in which we're teaching you. So when I apply this, I'm not gonna use any other fundamental. I mean, safely oriented in the direction of the target, but no front sight focus, no follow through, not even trigger control or trigger manipulation. I'm just gonna send it. I'm gonna show you wrong versus right. Let's start off with the wrong. As you can see, there's major displacement between rounds. That's not only inaccuracy, but that's also time. Remember, it's very inconsistent when I have shots across because the gun is landing in a different position each and every time. You think about stress, you think about all these other variables that are gonna impact me outside of the mechanics of the gun. I need to optimize my grip. So now I'm gonna hold the gun the right way or the proper way. When I'm holding the gun, I'm simply gonna retract it out of my field of view so you understand I'm not applying any other fundamental besides retaining the grip through the cycles of operation in the duration of the shot sequence, which is multiple rounds. In fact, I'm gonna shoot more than five rounds. I'm just gonna keep shooting so I can drive home the point. So as you can see, it looks like I just shot out the X in a county fair. The reason that is the way it is, is because I'm simply retaining the gun in its current position and allowing the gun to do its job. When we allow mechanical things that are tools to do what they do best, we are going to optimize their performance. It's as simple as that. Now back to it. So here we go. The first hand is your strong hand. Your strong hand, which is often a right hand, if you're a lefty, you're, you're, the, you're on the other side of this. Just contrast that. I have my right hand. There's a V notch that's cut into the grip of most guns. This little beaver tail right here, even in semi-automatic single action pistols like Glocks, they have that. If I look at my hand, I have a V notch in my hand or an L, whatever you're into, but it looks like a V to me that mates really well up with the V notch. I also have what's in my middle finger, a groove that's cut into the trigger guard. Now in this particular case, there's not a distinct groove, but there's real estate right here. A lot of semi-automatic pistols now come with this groove cut. So now I have two points of contact. I have my V-notch in the back strap of the frame, and I have my middle finger underneath the trigger guard. 
That's two points of contact that's reliable and repeatable. Because if I have a gap in the space and the gun muzzle flips and recoils, it lands in a different place each and every time. This and this is consistency. The third thing you do is hammer grip. Yes, hammer grip, watch this. Why am I doing this? The first time I taught gunfighter pistol, the first several times that I ran this course, I had people do this action. And I noticed half of the class was breaking their wrist doing this as they were moving the gun. Why? Because a lot of people are limp-wristed. I mean, nobody really teaches how to have a stiff wrist unless your dad or somebody taught you to shake a hand firmly where you retain the tension in your wrist. So even big burly guys, they do this. So when I tell them to not do that and to keep a stiff wrist, I'm allowing them to do a hammer grip. A hammer grip is also a grip that you literally hold on a hammer. When you swing a hammer and hit a nail on the head, when you do so, you don't overgrip it. What happens if you overgrip a hammer? Well, you'll smash your hand. The way that you do it is you let off a little bit so you don't have a death grip that allows you to finally manipulate the hammer in your hand to hit the nail on the head. That's one amazing parallel primates with monkeys and they haven't figured that out. The fact that we can is amazing. I mean, you literally take a nail and you do this and then you whack the nail on the head. That's amazing. That, that, was, in, that was sped up. That wasn't in real time. So when you have a stiff wrist, you're controlling recoil, but you're also adding the appropriate grip. Not a 60-40, but enough grip in your hand to not allow the gun to come out of your hand. So, V-notch, middle finger, hammer grip. What I like doing is using my support hand to apply it and push it down. I'm not flagging my hand, but I'm taking the pistol and pushing it down. Remember, grip starts with acquisition when you're pulling it from wherever you're pulling it from. Let's say it's appendix carry, center console, even nightstand. That start point of when you grab the gun is where the grip start point starts. You don't wanna grab a gun, pick up, and then reacquire. So if I'm looking at it from a holster perspective, when I come down on it, what I'm doing is pushing that V-notch in the back of my hand, and as I draw it up, I'm applying that middle finger to allow my hand to be appropriately on the pistol. The idea with shooting a good grip is I'm isolating the bottom of the frame, allowing the gun to cycle in its operation, in a platform with no manipulation. Because if I hold it and I allow it to do its mechanical job right, then I'm going to succeed. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the weak hand. Applying my weak hand to the gun is giving the platform that is my grip. Here's what I mean. If I'm holding the gun with one hand, I have a whole bunch of real estate that is readily available that if not compensated for, meaning if no real estate applied, the gun would go off and to the left because it's going to the point which I have no grip applied. If I take my thumb and apply it here, that will alleviate and reduce the amount of recoil that I'm feeling on the back end. But now when I have my support hand applied, I'm picking up all the real estate to create a structure. A lot of people think their grip comes from the bottom three fingers of their hand. It doesn't. In fact, when I shoot with my support hand applied, I could literally remove all of this because the grip comes from vicing the top of the frame. I'm creating a bench rest that's solid as a platform to allow the gun to cycle in its operation, not to move as a platform. If the grip came from the bottom and you literally did this, not only would you feel muzzle flip and recoil, but it would degrade speed and accuracy. Okay, so here we go. We can applied. The first thing I want you to do is as you're doing this as a diagnostic on the range, I want you to point your left thumb at the target. When you do that, I want you to keep your left thumb flat like a bullet is coming out of your thumb. Two, I want you to open your hand keeping your thumb flat. Three, I want you to turn the gun sideways as you've done this without flagging your hand. And I want you to look at the real estate where you're gonna apply your hand. And then I want you to upright the gun. Why am I having you do that? Well, one, 
if you extend your thumb, you're keeping a flat wrist, which is creating the rigidity in your wrist. Two, if you open your hand, you're applying the grip by understanding what it looks like and feels like before I apply it to the gun. Often I get people who do this, and that's what you'll see in the degradation of their hand. I mean, remember, the idea of what feels right works never. So you have to see that it works right, you have to feel that it looks right to confirm that it is right. So I have guys that shoot on the range, like, Mike, this new technique is great. And I'm like, look at your hands, you're like, well, how did that happen? Well, it feels right because you have tactile feel of the pistol, but you're not tracking. So if you wanna track it, you point your thumb at the target, you open your hand without flagging it. You look at the real estate, and then you apply it because you see what right looks like, and then you upright the gun. In the uprighting the gun, what I'm doing is creating an understanding of how to apply the gun into space to defend my life. So a lot of people, when I say, on the command of threat, I want you to drive your hands, or the gun in this case, to the target, this is what they do. Threat. Threat. Threat! So they're allowing the audible tone of my voice to control their behavior. Understand in self-defense, when you're driving a gun from any position and presenting it into space, like you're protecting your life, you're not gonna do so haphazardly, or in this case, slow. The reason you won't do that is because speed and accuracy matter. You're not a patrol officer. You're not going to present a gun to mitigate or reduce the threat. You're gonna present a gun because you're gonna defend your life because you have perceived that your life is in danger. So, as I'm setting my hands in platform, even with a pistol in my hands, I wanna get used to that. Threat. Threat. So two major components. One, speed is dictated by perception of threat, not by audible tones. So get used to training that way. Drive your hands the same way every time because your life depends on it. Two, I want you to throw hands and lift elbows. Remember, if your elbows are dropped, the only thing you're gonna do is facilitate recoil because the path of least resistance is muzzle flip recoil this way. So if you drop your elbows below, then what you're doing is giving a path of least resistance. If I simply lift my elbows, I'm creating resistance. And now the backwards movement is this. So. When you throw hands, think about your elbows. Your support elbow is going to be higher than the ergonomic position of your strong hand. Because if I lift my strong hand elbow, it's gonna tilt the gun out. But if I lift my support hand elbow, it's only gonna pitch the pistol better gripped on the frame of the gun. And that's awesome because I need that grip anyway. So let's recap. Strong hand. V-notch, middle finger, hammer grip. Turn the gun sideways. Point your left thumb at the target, open your hand, keeping your thumb flat. Look at where you're applying the grip. Upright the gun. Push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. I'm pushing the gun with speed in mind, and I'm raising my elbows in order to create the structure that's required of me shooting in position. Notice that I'm erect, yep, standing straight up, looking at you and presenting the pistol in between my eyes and the target. There is nothing else that's taking place on my body in my position. When you shoot with muscle contraction, you're going to reduce your speed and accuracy. Remember, the fundamental of grip is one of the most important fundamentals. If you have mastered grip because you have measured the diagnostic, then you will get better. I encourage you to go to the range, isolate grip in a training venue, and focus on becoming better by mastering basics. Hey guys, so every single time we do a block of instruction, I need to give you a practical exercise to take away to improve your skill sets. This is all basic fundamental, but if we master these fundamentals because we're playing close conscious attention, we will master them. So the first thing I want you to do is get in about six to eight feet of the target. 
I don't need a lot of distance here. I don't even need targets on the cardboard or backing that I'm shooting. I just need space. What I'm going to do is assess the grip by analyzing the shot on the target. And what I'm gonna do is shoot five round increments on target after I do my grip diagnostic each and every time. The space or distance in between each individual round will give me a good indication if I'm holding proper grip. So here we go. Walking through the diagnostics. I'm going ahead and load and make ready. V notch, middle finger, pushing the gun down into my hand. Hammer grip, turn the gun sideways without flagging your support hand, thumb at target. Open hand keeping the thumb flat, applying the grip what right feels like and looks like uprighting the gun. I could even do a couple push pulls, push, pull, push, pull. Pushing with speed, lifting my elbows, five round increments. Shoot it ready, stand by. Good, I'm gonna do the same exact thing and readjust my grip. V notch, reassess, do not check the block here. V notch, middle finger, no space, pushing the gun down into my acquired grip, hammer grip, turn the gun sideways, thumb at target, open hand, apply what right feels like and looks like, ready to go, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. Good, felt a lot better, a lot more controlled. The next drill that you could do is by doing the same diagnostic and the same application but this time I want you to depress the gun safely on target. That's why we want close proximity to the target because I want you to shoot while you look at the side of your hand. Let me show you what often is the wrong grip and what that looks like. It's the reciprocation of the cycle of operation of the gun moving in your hand around your support hand thumb. Watch this. Offset observing the side of my hand. Notice how the gun moves around my thumb. Now I'm going to pry the diagnostic all over again. V notch, middle finger, hammer grip, turn the gun sideways, left thumb at target, open hand, apply what right feels like, looks like, push, pull, push, pull. As I push the gun and look at the side of my field of view, now I can analyze if I'm holding it properly. Remember, I'm gripping the frame, which is vicing the position and structure of the gun in my hands. A lot flatter, and that's what right looks like. Guys, I hope this helps. Remember, you always have to have a tactic to practically apply the fundamentals that you're working. That's why I don't like vague and indefinite terms. Everything must be very definitive. All right, back for the outro. Guys, that concludes grip. It is a basic fundamental of both marksmanship and gunfighting. Make sure you take it seriously, you go and train, and you master the basics.